Hi there, welcome to another video with me, Jennifer Kirk, and uh, it's a little bit different from what the majority of my channel are. Uh, those of you who know me quite well um, will know that my principal job is as a writer, I write books, and today what we're going to do is we're going to just look in a little bit to the creative process behind writing, what it is I do, and uh, what makes uh, my little writing world tick for me. It's actually uh, the library. You probably recognise these if you've uh, been watching some of the other channels that uh, Zoe's been doing. Um, you'll recognise the backdrop from there. Um, but it just—it's it, where my computer is in the new house. Um, it's a lovely room. It's a little bit different from what I've been used to. I've normally written in spare bedrooms, but here we are. I've got my my computer um, under the desk. It's uh, actually an old server. Um, I've always had a love of high-powered computer hardware. I've got no idea how to use this stuff. Um, I'm still using Microsoft Office 97. This is a program that uh, came around in the era of Windows 95. Um, I still use that to write all of my stuff. So who knows why I'm using a supercomputer, but needs must when, uh, when, when the little techno queen is in the house. I like to surround myself with books because I think it's very important uh, for a writer to read far more than they actually write. I think it's one of the, the only ways that you can actually improve your craft is by looking at what other people are doing. Um, and it's something that when people come up to me at book signings um, and, and ask for advice, uh, I, I do say to them, make sure you read a lot of other people's books. Um, not necessarily even within the same genre that you like to write. Um, I've drawn a lot of inspiration, ironically, from things like children's books, good children's books, because it's a, it's a genre where you can't layer in the purple prose, you can't use the big fancy words and, and use graphic violence or anything like that. It's a very simple, very basic storytelling style, um, and it gets the maximum amount of information across in a way that's very vivid in the reader's imagination without actually using a lot of words. If you go away yourself and look at the average children's book, they're quite short, um, they're not wordy, but you always remember reading them with this very vivid and emotive picture. And that was something that I really kind of wanted to try and recreate in some small way in my own writing. So I've been reading a lot of Arthur Ransom, Enid Blyton, of course, um, and even stuff like the Hardy Boys, um, it's, it's all good. Um, but also, not neglecting, of course, uh, sci-fi and fantasy genres, such as what I, the bulk of what I write. So a lot of the classics, things like Philip K. Dick, Arthur C. Clarke. Um, and writing, as I say to a lot of people at these times, is a very subjective thing. It doesn't matter if somebody says to you, oh, I really don't like your writing, because everybody has books. Uh, famous books that you say, oh, I just really couldn't get into that, I, I didn't enjoy that. Um, so what one person likes, another person doesn't necessarily like, and it doesn't mean that it's good or bad, it's just the way things are. What I like to do when I'm writing, uh, one of the little creative tricks um, that I have, um, I don't tend to make notes. Um, those of you who've seen me at signings doing what appears to be notes in a notepad, a lot of that's down to the fact that um, I, I don't have a computer with me at signing, so I have to write by hand. Most of my work is done on the computer. I've been using computers for writing since 1994, 1995, quite a long time. Um, and um, I find that I can type a good deal faster than I can write by hand. I do find that putting music on to set the scene does help me a lot with writing fiction. I have an extensive record collection. Uh, I used to work in radio. Uh, so there's plenty of music to pick from and this um, I, I find it helps focus my mind by putting a record on that um, it, it's a bit like watching a film. 
um, and listening to the incidental music, what incidental music goes with what scene. Um, I try and pick something out, I'll put it on, I've got a, a record player behind me, because a lot of my stuff is vinyl. There's also a CD player down here if I want to put on a CD. Um, and I'll, I'll listen to it with headphones if necessary, uh, whilst I'm writing. Um, and it's been said about my, my work that it kind of reads a bit like how you'd imagine a film to be, and I think a lot of that is down to the musical inspirations. I also like to take frequent breaks, I think that is important. You can't just sit down and churn out eight hours worth of writing, because you just burn yourself out. So, you know, I write for a bit, I, you know, kick back, maybe just watch a bit of TV, um, or just lie down on a sofa. If, if it looks like I'm daydreaming, and my mother will attest to this from when I was a teenager, I, I might look like I'm kind of just snoozing, but a lot of the time it's playing through plot ideas in my head. I think that is important. Daydreaming time is another important part of writing. It's why a lot of people who don't do a lot of creative writing don't understand writers and think that we're all slackers. Um, but um, I also set myself targets. And now something as creative as writing is difficult to... Uh, really work to fix targets, but I like to, when I'm having a writing day, to aim for around 4,000 words of text. If you try for more than that, I find that you tend to start scraping the barrel, and it's not good, it's not quality work that you're writing. But by the same token, it's you know, if you find that you're having a very good day, and the writing keeps coming, then it's not a problem. Keep writing. More than 4,000 words is absolutely fine. But if inspiration is tough, don't beat yourself up if you can't make that target. This book here is the one I'm working on at the moment. It's called Long Summer of War. That's a working title. It's now at the editing stage. So we've written the bulk and what we're going to do now is go through and do an edit. I like to put things to one side, leave it for a month, because that kind of removes you a little bit from the creative process. If you immediately try and edit a piece of work, it's very difficult um, because your brain knows what you meant to say and kind of glosses over it. You see what you meant to write, not what is actually there. But by leaving it a month, you start to distance yourself from that creative process and you can look at it more uh, subjectively, more like um, your reader would, and you start to pick up on the error. Well, I hope this video has been informative uh, and helped you get a little bit of an understanding into what it's like to be a writer how it works. Um, it isn't necessarily how other writers do it, but you know, it's something that it's, it is quite difficult to find information on. Um, I know I've not actually met a great deal of other writers, and it's always interesting for me to find out how other writers um, do their craft. Um, but this is a little insight into how I do mine. Just remember, uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you think there's somebody else who needs to see it, don't forget to share it. And if you want to see more on the subject of my writing, or indeed any of the other topics that I regularly um, do videos about, then subscribe to the channel. Um, and look back through some of the previous videos, because there's a lot on the channel for you to see. This is me, Jennifer Kirk, saying take very good care of yourself, and bye for now.